Welcome to Thomas Jefferson's 1,000 foot long revolutionary garden at Monticello, here in Charlottesville, Virginia. We may refer to this as Jefferson's garden, but of course, all of Monticello's gardens were the work of many hands, enslaved and free, male and female. For example, Jefferson's correspondence with his daughter Martha Jefferson Randolph and her daughters reveals their involvement in the planting and maintaining of the oval flower beds on Monticello's West Lawn. In fact, it was in an 1807 letter to granddaughter Anne Carey Randolph that then President Jefferson sketched out the winding path and oval beds, writing, I find that the limited number of our flower beds will too much restrain the variety of flowers in which we might wish to indulge. And therefore, I have resumed an idea of a winding walk surrounding lawn before the house with a narrow border of flowers on each side. This would give us abundant room for a great variety. When the time came to lay out these beds, Anne's younger sister Ellen tagged along and reported that Jefferson carried the string and directed the work with Anne by his side as his active and useful assistant, and the skilled enslaved gardener Wormley Hughes carried the shovel and hoe. Martha and her daughters provided regular reports on the ornamental gardens, giving the president a sense of what bits of green might be poking through the ground while he was away from home. In another letter to Anne, Jefferson used flowers as a metaphor for life's transitions, writing the flowers come forth like the bells of the day, have their short reign of beauty and splendor, and retire, like them, to the more interesting office of reproducing their like. The voices of the enslaved women whose hands were also in the soil at Monticello are harder to hear. We see fleeting references in Anne Carey Randolph's household account book, which she kept between 1805 and 1808. There she recorded purchases of produce and eggs from Monticello's enslaved community, such as this entry for one and a half dozen cucumbers, a musk melon, and a watermelon bought from Ursula Granger Hughes. Ursula was the wife of Gardner Wormley Hughes and was both an enslaved farm laborer and a cook. She had received a year of training with the French chef Honoré Julien at the president's house in Washington. Whether providing poetry or sustenance, Monticello's gardens and those who work on them have always been the source of stories and inspiration. And that tradition continues. Mm -hmm.